It's a binge! For those of you who are new, this is basically a recap of all the episodes we did recently, but the people who choose not to watch daily like to watch it in all one sitting and sometimes do their homework or study to it or relax to it, or it's just because they don't have the time, they just choose to do it weekly. Compilation! Okay, bye. Can we just take a moment and think about the time my dad accidentally made a fried egg that looks... EXACTLY LIKE AFRICA! I'm actually the most impressed by the fact the egg also has a Madagascar. Madagascar. Trying to deny that you might actually like a certain character. It's total fabrication. Pure fiction. Not a chance. Wrong. No. No way. It never happened. It totally did. Whoa. Leg day, bro. You're an embarrassment to this whole gym! It looks like a potato of four toothpicks. Slicing my ham. Death is on its way, human. Can I, can I cuddle death and give death chin scritches and kisses? Scritches cannot postpone the inescapable fate ordained to you, human. However, they may hurt you, person love rubs. Someone reading my writing. Wow, that's a great story. Me sticking my hands in the plot holes. Thanks. It has pockets. Yo, you emo bitches okay? I'm fine, thank you for asking. Though recently, there has been a darkness growing within me. I just learned that a Japanese term for seahorse is Tatsuno Otoshigo, and it literally means dragon's illegitimate child. Well, look at him. He's a bastard. Whoa, who do we fight? Anyone not wearing a primary color? This is my favorite line in the show. Oh my god, my tears. The three stages of a cat yawn. The tiny little all mouth. The sticky the tongue out real far. And stage five, blame. Love writing stories and making a half slice of life plot, half important plot stuff thing. One minute it's like, ah, oh, the main character's crush on a girl and doesn't know how to tell her. Then the next is like, hey bro, you know what would be pretty cool? If we killed God. Ah oh, yes, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. I think you mean, oh yes, the four human emotions, secondhand embarrassment, frustration, gay, and sadness. I identify with all four. I guess that means I am a homestuck. How many ass do you get in a day, Puckacho? Depends on how active I am, but usually 40 to 50, Smelly. I'm not Smelly! You are. You've always been. You always will be. And that's okay. It's a nice smell. Goodbye. Aliens being confused by how humans deal with scent. Human. Oh, I'm gonna have to wash this blanket to get rid of that new smell. Okay, wash blanket, get rid of weird smell. <laughs> Gotta love that new car smell. Okay, then sh cars, it's a different story, I guess. Crap that one out. Ah, uh, old book smells so good. I don't know what I'm supposed to write here. Mmm, I love that new book smell. Why are you like this? Are there any book series that an author has finished and then continued again down the line, done a spinoff that have actually been good? Trying to think of any where the new additions to the series weren't absolute garbage. So, Percy Jackson. And to more Pierce are the most suggested examples here. And uh, shout out to the person who suggested the New Testament. Good job. Classy. Parents picking their child's name. Eh, I like the way it sounds, sure. Writers picking their character's name. What genre is it? How old are they? Active or passive blood type? Country of origin? Is it a family name? What does the name mean? Is it pretentious? Is it not pretentious enough? Can it be used as a metaphor? What position was the planet to the stars at the exact moment of their birth? Is the name gay enough? Alternatively, Writer looks around room, spots a can of lice on their table. Ah, the great King Lysen, ruler of the nation of Tabloria. I'm not religious, and I got bored with the default, oh my god, and, and Jesus Christ expletives. So now when I examine, I just use the names of my favorite historical figures. For example, Suffering Sappho. My parents are religious, so I'm not allowed to say those. And I'm also not allowed to curse. So my three replacement words and phrases are shiz nuggets, curses, and by the knees of Barry B. Benson. By the knees of Barry B. Benson is technically in violation of the Eighth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. But... How, though? Forbids cruel and unusual punishment. And the winner of the bake-off is... Nine dismembered bodies. This is like... Cards Against Humanity. How the fuck did this happen? You've heard of press F to pay respects. Now get ready for... Please press O to spend time with the boys.
You know, I've never seen a prompt in a video game that asks so politely. You know what? I think I will press O to spend time with the boys. Thank you very much, video game. Where would we be as a society without gay podcasts? Nowhere, that's where- If you were in charge of Brazil, what would be your policies? Everybody has to come to Brazil. And what if I don't? <laughs> SpongeBob! It's too late. He's Brazilian now. Not that I don't love the cursed biofacts, but do you have any blessed biofacts? Yes, I do. Hyenas can loaf like house cats. <gasps> oh! Babies! Okay, Goat, I got a job for you. Make me anxious about furries. I mean, not to offend furries, mostly all are nice. Okay. So imagine Five Nights at Freddy's, but one of the animatronics is just a person dropping in from a furry convention. Oh! So, uh, <laughs> this is how I found out the Five Nights at Freddy's animatronics contained the corpses of murdered children. <laughs> huh. You just, uh, you're all really just out there, playing a game that's, uh, where, where that's the canon lore. <laughs> I can. <laughs> you all finally broke me. Holy shit! FNAF, how the fuck did you break gold? If you read something in P.M. Seymour's voice, it becomes like ten times funnier. I've been doing this all day. My mom gave me a banana. Did you see that cow? Yeah, I don't like scarecrows. You know, the worst part is, is I hear it, and I know which voices to use. And I did. You're fighting over the ponytail Zuko discourse, but let me introduce you to the cursed concept of... Pigtail Zuko. Oh. Hate. Hate this. Today, I learned that Van Halen have that rider in their contract about a bowl of M&Ms with all the brown ones removed. In order to know at a glance if the promoter read the entire contract. And the reason they do that is because they once had a stage collapse because a promoter hadn't read the proper way to set up all the specific technical stuff. So if the band goes in the dressing room or catering and sees brown M&Ms, they know they have to double check the stage setup for safety. Yo, now that's rock and roll right there. Okay, someone who has never watched JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, explain this. I love you, Sally. No, oh, that's so cute. Also, I kind of turned into a demonic rock star halt when people hug me, but that's okay because- Wait, what? I love you too! <laughs> I mean, it's not that far off from what might actually be the truth. Your belly button is just your old mouth. I was having a good day. We were all having a good day. 99% of the time I see a cat, I just have to like drop whatever the hell I'm doing and acknowledge that there's a cat and say hi to the cat and walk up to the cat and try to pet the cat. Yo, I don't know how to tell you this, but uh, that's some big Seb energy you got right there. Don't ever call me OP. You will address me by my full name. Oh, yes, Obert Pobert. When your straight friend about to do something stupid. Hetero, don't! Hetero, don't! Hetero, don't! 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 I had a dream last night that Mothman was getting sued by the state of West Virginia for accidentally breaking light post, and he hired me as his lawyer. And in court, I was like, now, my client is a giant moth, so you can't blame him for loving lights. And halfway through my speech, I turned to address Mothman and saw he was bumping into courtroom lights and they broke and caused a power outage. Happy Pride Month to my favorite piece of official Sonic the Hedgehog art. If you're homophobic, you don't understand what Sonic is all about. It's about friendship and justice and being free to be yourself. Open your heart. Live and learn. That's what Sonic the Hedgehog is about. Today's headline. Sorry I didn't respond to your text. I get overwhelmed by simple tasks. It's okay. Me. Constantly. My college doesn't allow us to carry pepper spray for self-defense because they claim it's a weapon. And it is, but I'm at a culinary school. Every single student is carrying several hundred dollars worth of knives around with them, and they teach classes on how to break down whole animals easily with said knives. But no pepper spray, because no, 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 no way, that's too dangerous. 
Also, I can attest to this fact as a former culinary student, those knives are so sharp, you don't actually feel when they cut you because pain is felt on rough edges and not extremely sharp edges. So, yeah, fucking pepper spray is bad, right? I'll have you know, I am hot. Hot in love, obnoxious, and terrible. When I was in preschool, there was this really weird system of timeout where they'd put you in this giant plastic bucket, sort of like this one. And the rule was, you couldn't leave the bucket for 10 minutes. Weird. In case you didn't know, I was what the teachers referred to as a difficult child, which is code for walking entity of sass. So I was in this timeout bucket quite a bit. Once they put me in the bucket for 30 minutes, and I thought that was incredibly unfair. So I grabbed the handles and shifted my body repeatedly until the bucket and I were out of the classroom, in the hallway, and through the front door. They found me in the parking lot scooting to freedom in the timeout bucket. My teachers were furious, and I said, hey, I never left the bucket. So they called my mom and told her what I did, and she just said, well, he never left the bucket. Me brewing some loose leaf tea. The part of my brain that is point zero zero one second away from going completely feral. Eat the leaves. Eat the wet leaves, dumbass, do it! Some edgy loner character in a TV show. Do you know? Do you know what it's like to be afraid of yourself? Me, thinking about that time I ate an entire family-sized bag of Doritos in one evening. God, dude, I sure do. Year one of mental illness versus year 10. And I'm gonna tell you guys, at year 20, y'all basically just start making fun of your mental illness. Like, anxiety would be like, man, I don't want to get out of bed today. And you'll just loom over like, I don't want to get out of bed today. <laughs> get the fuck out of bed, bitch. We got shit to do. The year is 2023. Marie Kondo holds Jeff Bezos by the skin on the back of his neck in front of a public gathering. Does this spark joy? She shouts at the restless audience. They boo in response. She snaps his spine like a 0.5 millimeter mechanical pencil lead and throws his lifeless corpse into the crowd. They cheer in response. Please tell me this is our timeline, please. Please, please give this to me. I introduce you to the concept of Schrodinger's teenager. A person between the ages of 13 and 18 is simultaneously just a child and also a grown adult, depending on how mad an adult is at them. Why is this true? Alright, so out of curiosity, how do we activate Yellowstone? By Yellowstone, do you mean the super volcano located under Yellowstone National Park that has the theoretical ability to super erupt and destroy the majority of animal and plant life as we know it? Yes, how do we activate it? Okay, first, you need a paperclip. Today's headline, nearly a dozen earthquakes shake near Yellowstone National Park in 24 hours. Congratulations, Goad. You did it. What? What? I posted this 30 minutes ago as a ship post. What the fuck just happened? Shall I compare thee to a summer day? Cause thou hast no class. <sighs> the worst part about parallel parking is the witnesses. You know, there's no witnesses if you're bad enough at parallel parking. If you catch my drift. Wink wink. Saying it from my jail cell. Please. Fire me. A lady came in screaming and ranting how he wrote an obscene insult on her sandwich. Turns out she ordered a BLT with cheese, and we wrote BLT plus CH on it. It took me and a manager 15 minutes just to calm her down enough to even listen to us. You know, it sounds like she was a real BLT with cheese. Using that. My favorite thing about fan writers is they see unfulfilled potential and decide, okay, guess I'll do it myself. Case in point. The once were fandom. Must you people siphon away every little pleasure I have left? In France, they say MDR instead of LOL, and that roughly translates to death by laughter. So basically, instead of laughing really loudly like we do, the French laugh so hard that they die. French slang is freaking metal. Ah, death by <laughs> Those moments when straight people assume you're one of them and you feel like a gay secret agent. Lesbianage. Bye, spy. It's an ace case. Secret gay agent man. 
How do you politely tell someone you want to hit them with a brick? One wishes to acquaint your facial features with a fundamental item used in building walls. Repeatedly. That was the most beautiful thing I've ever read. What I'm saying is, is that bisexuals, pansexuals, and asexuals should all join together so we could be in the fictitious trifecta. Enough people will say that we're not real and we'll all converge together in a massive, fierce mass only spoken of in myth. Don't come near us or you too will cease to exist. So what you're saying is the queer Triforce. Can we include aromantics? Now it has become the Triforce of Fabulousness! Pucky, are you okay? Mentally, physically, monetarily, no. Yet I thrive anyways. I am just angry. You sound like my Polish friend, Milk. They name people condiments over there? Milk is not a condiment? Oh? Then what do you put on your milk burger then? Guys, I don't know how to tell you this, but holy shit, that's a real thing. What the fuck is that? Oh, Pucky. You have made cursed commentary for so long that now it has become reality. Suffer. My next million dollar idea. Reluctant exercise videos with people who aren't perky. Just five more, I don't know. I kinda wanna die right now too, so let's just power through it. Okay, New York Pose. It's gonna egg like a bastard until your hamstrings release. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie. Stretch a little deeper. It's okay to yell fuck at this point. I won't tell anyone. Um, yes. Yes. Give me. I have done it. I have 3D printed out candy. Excuse me? It has begun. Soon, we'll be able to illegally download food. Or fucking one of you actually just becomes the next Willy Wonka with the fucking weird shapes and everything. Somebody make everlasting gobstoppers right now. Like how they're shaped in the movie. Do it! Do it now! Please, please, I need money need. I have a concept. A fairy tale where the wicked step-parent, who is of course also some sort of warlock, transforms the princess into a swan, as one does, kind of in the rules, but rather than running off to mope around in a lake and be beautifully tragic, the princess decides to stick around the palace and cause problems on purpose. So I see. Being transformed into a swan, the most vicious creature in the lake, allowed her to access her inner diva in a way that was completely foreign to her as a sweet nature child. And from that day forward, everyone in a three country radius was fucking terrified of anything with wings. It is a lovely day in the palace. And you are a horrible swan. 13 and 16 year olds nowadays don't have a gray point. They'll say something like, Racial issues prevail because the heads of the capitalist system are benefited by it. And then three seconds later, tweet something like, Bob the Builder owns my uwus, colon three, without batting an eye. This is the true Gen Z experience. Once in my sixth hour, we were talking about 9-11 and I announced very loudly, more people died in Hurricane Maria than in 9-11, but nobody really cares because you can't use hurricanes to justify imperialism. And then not even five seconds later, I said, yeehaw, my beats. The world's in good hands, I think, in my opinion. All right, we've talked about it before. Kobe is for accuracy and precision, and Yeet is for power and distance. So now we must complete the trait system. I give you. 2020 D&D. Kobe, dexterity. Yeet, strength. Oof, constitution. T, intelligence. Yellow, wisdom. And wig, charisma. Today I learned a lightning strike can strip the bark off a tree completely. When the lightning hits, it superheats the water under the bark, creating nearly instantaneous steam pressure, which blows all the bark off. Yo, that tree's now dead. <laughs> I can't believe God circumcised this tree. I can't believe you made me read that with my own two eyes. What the fuck do you mean this is a cake for somebody's 50th birthday? Oh, oh, they're five, never mind. Actually, it's for someone's 850th birthday. Actually, it's Lightning and Spider-Man's 50th wedding anniversary. Um, actually, it's Lightning and Spidey's 850th wedding anniversary, thank you. 
Yo, we vibing today. How much walking does she have to do to get them tree trunk thighs? Oh, Julia's daily stroll of walking on her enemies' skulls and graves. Prepare for stepping. So here's a story. A couple years ago, one night, I was about to propose to my girlfriend when my roommate Joseph barged into the room out of nowhere, tripped and fell over, breaking a glass table with his face. Totally ruined the mood. Now, I didn't know Joseph that well. Don't even remember where he was from. But let's say I put my plans on hold to help him through his injuries. Joseph had gotten big glass shard in his eye, making him completely blind in that eye. He was walking around with one of them cotton pads on his eye for a couple months. Then suddenly, he disappeared, along with my girlfriend. Apparently, they bonded during the time after his injuries, and eloped together, leaving me behind without as much as a note. I tried to track him down, but I never could. In conclusion, if it hadn't been for Cotton Eye Joe, I'd have been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? How dare you make me read that with my own two eyes? Welcome to Late Night Tumblr Posts. Come, sit down. You know, his eyes say bedroom, but his hands say hospital. Are you ready for my favorite fact? If you leave a hamster wheel out in the forest, wild mice will come and run on it. That is my favorite fact. I have one as well. Bobcats and lynx will sit in cardboard boxes abandoned in the middle of the forest. I asked a lynx researcher who told me this why, and he said, Cats, man, and shrugged. Love it. Medusa, trying to turn you to stone, but you accidentally call her Melissa when you first walked in, and now you're too embarrassed to look at her. It's all right, she keeps saying. I get it all the time, but you still won't look. You don't even remember the stone thing until later. Yeah, <laughs> mythos joke. I am mad about the idea of money being exchanged for goods and services. First of all, explain to me what makes them goods instead of bads. Okay, first off, I'm screaming because I don't know if OP knows this, but this is a real thing in economics that we talk about and draw models of. A bad is a commodity that the consumer doesn't like. Money can be exchanged for bads and disservices. My dad yelled, Hennessy, come do a line of coke with me. So I went to the kitchen and he set this up. Oh my fucking God. This makes it sound like you were totally up for doing a line of actual coke with your father. Hello, I will be your surgeon today. Internal bleeding, you say? Oh, let's make our first little incision. Doctor, we're losing him. Quick, hand me the defibrillator. Please, please, I beg you. Just turn off my fucking life support. Why divide people by unrational things when you could divide them by whether their word for cotton candy is valid or not? American English, cotton candy, good. British English, fairy floss, not valid. Spanish and German, sugar cotton, very good. And the French, daddy's beard, absolutely not valid. I'm sorry, the French call it what? Hey, I'm Mobo. Hi, Mobo. Can you, can you leave? You've heard of Slenderman. Now get ready for Slenderman's sassy gay brother, Trenderman. Trenderman will just sit here silently judging your fashion sense. <laughs> Those crocs? Not on my watch, bitch. George Washington died in 1799, 25 years before the first dinosaur was classified. So therefore, George Washington never knew about dinosaurs. Why does this make me so sad? Hey, does anyone have that one pick from Final Fantasy VII where Cloud's name is Gay420 Gay and Eris is Cool Ranch? <sighs> cool Ranch. There it is. All lesbians are fucking beautiful, unless they prefer handsome. In that case, they're fucking handsome. Yeah. Sonic. Snoik. Soin. Sin. The hog. He sings. I give to you a Soviet soldier training his backflip tomahawk throw. Ah, sorry. He was <laughs> what? Hey, Bert, have you seen my waste paper basket? Ask me that again and look into my eyes. Sometimes I'm Ernie, and sometimes I'm Bert. Oh, God, no, 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 no. I don't want Jangles the Moon Monkey as a follower. Oh, God. This is no exaggeration. This is the scariest thing I've ever seen in my fucking life. He has no commands, cannot be dismissed. It's just got a hundred times worse. He has no commands. He can't be dismissed. This stuffed monkey is fucking pissed. Is this, is this nature's way of joking around? 
golden yellow crypto crystalline fluoride serum by quartz crystal points <gasps> gem egg